Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions, and welcome to the fourth tutorial in this series on the basics of compositing theory. In this episode, we'll be tying up two loose ends from what we've discussed so far. First, we'll look again at pre-multiplication and investigate what it means for an image to be pre-multiplied against colours other than black. And then we'll take a look at a set of compositing operations designed for combining two images that both have their own alpha channel. So first of all, pre-multiplication again. Let's remind ourselves what a standard pre-multiplied image looks like and what's actually going on. Here's how we built it. This is our straight RGB image and this is our single channel alpha source. We used a custom tool to add the alpha channel image to the alpha channel of our harbour shot and we did that by entering A2 into our alpha expression field. And at this point our image is unpre-multiplied. To make it pre-multiplied we multiplied each of the RGB channels by the alpha channel so that's C1 times A2. Remembering that I've linked my green and blue channels to my red channel so we only need to enter this expression once. So let's take a good look at what we've now done. If we monitor the alpha channel, we can of course see our single channel black and white mask, but it's the RGB I want to focus on here. As you can see, our image is now composited over black using the alpha channel as a mask. What we've done is to create a new RGB image where all of the pixels that sit under the zero values of the alpha channel have become black. So it's perhaps more accurate to say we've actually pre-composed our image over black. In fact, it's the equivalent of having performed an over or normal operation against a black background. In fact, let's do just that so we can compare the result. I'll pipe this black background into my custom tool and we can access it using C3. So to do our usual normal or over operation, I'll type C3 times open brackets one minus A2 close brackets plus C1 times A2. And obviously that's exactly the same. It's just a long way of expressing it. But the reason I wanted to do that is to show you what it means when we use a different color instead of black, because that's what it means to pre-multiply by a different color. Let's swap out the black background for a white one. The image we've now made is what's known as pre-multiplied by white. And this is where it starts to get confusing because the term pre-multiplication doesn't accurately describe the process or the result. What we've done is to create a composite of our image over a white background. It's not really pre-multiplied. It's more accurate to say it's pre-composited. Pre-multiplication is an accurate way of describing the process of simply multiplying the RGB by the alpha channel to suppress the background pixels to black, but it's a very unhelpful way of describing the process we're now looking at. But quite a lot of the terminology we use doesn't strictly make sense. So, what are the implications of this process for our final composite? Over on the left, I've put up what our composite should look like. And on the right is what it looks like if we use our new version that's been pre-multiplied on white. As you can see, we've now got an unwanted white fringe and that's no good. So what we need to do, as with all pre-multiplied images, is to un-pre-multiply before the composite. Now with black, that was an easy operation, since as you'll remember, we could simply divide the RGB by the alpha channel. Since the RGB is composited over black and the alpha channel is itself black and white, we can reverse the operation knowing that the RGB values will translate correctly. But that's not the case with any color other than black. To make this example really clear, I'm going to change my pre-multiplication color to yellow so that fringe problem is really obvious. So 
To unpremultiply this image, we need to create a map of all the yellow background pixels and then subtract that from the RGB in order to remove it from the image. To do that, I'm going to use this new custom tool and I'll pipe that background yellow into the image to input. So to create my yellow subtraction map, I'm going to multiply my yellow background color by the inverse of the alpha. So that's C2 times open brackets, one minus A1 close brackets. And here's what that looks like. So I can now subtract this from my pre-multiplied image. So that's C1 minus C2 times open brackets, one minus A1 close brackets. And now we're looking much healthier because we're back to having our RGB composited on black and we're on familiar ground. However, looking at our composite, we've got that familiar gray fringe. And to sort that out, all we need to do, as you'll remember, is to divide our previous result by the alpha. So I need to put my expression in brackets and then divide it by A1. And finally, we've got a nice clean composite without a hint of that problematic yellow. And this same technique will work with any image that's been pre-multiplied against any color. Now, not a lot of applications give you the ability to deal with this problem easily, but there's one that does it really brilliantly, and that's After Effects. So here's my yellow pre-multiplied image exported as a TIFF and brought into After Effects. Because After Effects recognizes the TIFF as being pre-multiplied, it's automatically set that up correctly. But here's the really clever part. If we go to Interpret Footage Main and look at the pre-multiplication settings, you'll see that it's correctly guessed that the background is yellow and it's compensated accordingly. So that's some really fancy footwork going on in the background there to come up with the right guess for that pre-multiplication color. I want to briefly mention another method that's occasionally found for dealing specifically with images that are pre-multiplied against white. So let's revert to that situation, which I'll do by changing my background color here back to white. Now, because our alpha channel is black and white, we can use a much simpler method for creating a map of the white background by simply inverting the alpha. And we can then use that as our subtraction map to subtract from our RGB. So let's do that in this new custom tool. One minus A1 obviously gives us this map of the white background pixels because that's just the inverse of the alpha. We can then subtract that from the pre-multiplied RGB. So that's C1 minus open brackets, one minus A1 close brackets, which gives this. And very simply, that gets us back to where we want to be, which is a composite of our image on black. And we need to remember to unpremultiply. So we'll put the entire expression in brackets and divide by A1. And that gives us a perfect composite. And I have to give a hat tip to Apple Motion for offering this as an option. So here's a PNG pre-multiplied on white. And if I come over to the media tab and switch the alpha type to pre-multiplied white, all is good. The bad news, however, is that it gets the process very badly wrong when the format is TIFF and it ends up dividing by the alpha twice over, thereby completely killing any transparency. And there's no easy way to fix that inside motion. Okay, so far we've only considered pre-multiplication against solid colors, but there's another kind and that's where the image is pre-multiplied against another image. That's something that's typically found in 3D renders, where the foreground object is rendered against a background. I'm going to come on to an actual 3D example shortly, but first let's see how that process works in the light of what we already know.
I'm going to pre-multiply my harbour shot against this dramatic sky background. So to do that, I can simply pipe the sky image into the image 3 input in place of the solid background colour we've been using. As I'm sure you'll realise, all we've done here is perform a basic normal or over operation to create our new pre-composed RGB image with the alpha channel again looking like this. This is exactly what a pre-multiplied 3D render would look like. So now if we try to composite that over our original landscape background, our problem is that we're seeing the edges contaminated by the dramatic sky background. Again, we can unpremultiply in the same way as we just did with our solid color backgrounds. So coming back to our unpremultiply operation, I'm going to pipe that dramatic sky background into the image two input of the custom tool. And again, let's look at the component parts of that operation. So C2 times open brackets one minus A1 close brackets is the map of our background pixels, our subtraction map. We can now subtract that from our pre-multiplied RGB. So that's C1 minus C2 times open brackets one minus A1 close brackets. And that gives us back our composite on black, which we then simply need to divide by the alpha as usual. So that's all of that in brackets divided by A1. And now the composite again looks perfect with no trace of our original dramatic sky background around those edges. So finally, let's come on to an actual 3D render. And here's a shot I created in Modo. And then I rendered it again with a very shallow depth of field so we could see what happens to all those transparent edge pixels. I'll quickly show you the alpha channel so you can see that the signet ring is the foreground object that I've rendered against this HDR environment background. So by default, Modo renders pre-multiplied images, which is what we're looking at here. But I've also rendered out the background without the foreground, and that looks like this, with a black hole where my foreground object should be. So if you're wanting to composite your 3D foreground over a very different background to that of the original 3D scene, you'll want to be able to neutralize the effect that original background had on the edge pixels. Let's use our dramatic sky as our new background and composite our 3D signet ring over the top of that. It's particularly obvious that this area at the top of the ring is not sitting in well. So let's come to our unpremultiply operation and I'll pipe that background render into the image to input. And now because our background render is already a pixel map for the background, we don't need to pre-compute that. So we can just use C1 minus C2. And that gives us an RGB composite over black that looks like this. So finally, we need to divide the result by the alpha. So put that in brackets and divide by A1. I'll put my original composite over here on the left and we can compare it with our new composite on the right. And it should be obvious that the foreground now sits much more effectively in our sky background. And we've lost that problematic edge contamination from our original rendered background. I won't go into too much more detail here other than to note that professional 3D applications like Modo also offer the option to render unpremultiplied images to simplify the process, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Hopefully you've understood by now that when we talk about pre-multiplication against anything other than black, we're talking about pre-compositing the image with a background. And the use of the term pre-multiplication isn't terribly helpful or accurate. So you're probably mightily relieved that we're now going to move on from pre-multiplication and take a quick look at something a bit different.
And that's the specific operations that get called into play when both foreground and background images have their own alpha channel. And it's important to note that these operators assume pre-multiplied source images. So to demonstrate this, I've applied this circular alpha to my landscape background and our usual keyhole cutout to the foreground. What each of these operations does is that one image, or both, borrows the alpha channel of the other image. And there are four combinations of that idea that we're going to look at. The first two operations return only the foreground image and nothing of the background image, except in the sense that they use its alpha channel. So the first operation we're going to look at is called in. And what this does is return the foreground inside the alpha channel of the background. So with this custom tool, I need to enter C2 times A1 for the RGB channels and A2 times A1 for the alpha. So we're combining the two alpha channels by multiplying them together. And in that case, the circular cutout of the background image is cropping off the top and bottom of the keyhole alpha to give us this shape. The operation called out is the inverse of that. In other words, it gives us back our foreground image without the area defined by the alpha of the background. So that's a question of inverting A1 in each case. So for the RGB, that's C2 times 1 minus A1. And for the alpha, that's A2 times 1 minus A1. So our keyhole has now got a bit missing where it meets the circular alpha of the background. Moving on, a top gets a bit more tricky. What it returns is the foreground over the background inside the alpha channel of the background. So for that, we need to multiply the foreground by the alpha of the background. So that's C2 times A1, and then add that to the background multiplied by the alpha of the foreground. So that's plus C1 times open brackets, one minus A2 close brackets. And for the alpha, we just need A1, which is the alpha of the background. And finally, let's look at XOR, which returns both the foreground and the background inside their respective alpha channels, except where those alpha channels overlap. So for the RGB, I'm going to multiply the foreground by the background's inverted alpha. So that's C2 times open brackets, one minus A1 close brackets. And then I'll add that to the background multiplied by the foreground's inverted alpha. And that's plus C1 times open brackets, one minus A2 close brackets. And for the alpha, we need to do the same thing. So that's A1 times open brackets, one minus A2 close brackets, plus A2 times open brackets, one minus A1 close brackets. And we get this result. So we've got the background and the foreground inside their respective alphas, except where those two alphas overlap, where we get nothing. Now, each of these operations is available in Fusion's Merge tool under the Operator menu. Out is called Held Out, but otherwise they're exactly the same as I've described them above. Now, I've got a confession to make, and that's that I very rarely use any of these operations, although I know a lot of people like them. Of course, how you choose to work is entirely up to you, and the good thing is to have a variety of strategies at your fingertips and understand exactly how they work in their different ways. So, I hope this has been a useful look at the mysterious world of the Alpha Channel, Many thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.